Hey everybody, in this video we're just going to go over some basic Jinja templating. You should have watched a couple Jinja videos in the Plural Site series, but this is just to help you see some more examples of what you might see in an actual Jinja template. So the end goal on this course is you're going to use Jinja templates to build out an actual Cisco configuration. Um, but before we can do that, we really need to work through some basic examples so you understand the concepts of for loops and if statements and just referencing variables in your Jinja template. So in order to demonstrate this, I've gone to a website called J2 Live. It's just an online Jinja render that we can use. And so looking at the website, you have this area where you'd write your template. And then you have a second area where you'd input your data in either YAML or JSON format. And then I've gone ahead and selected a couple options down here. So I set the rendering mode to Ansible. To be honest, I really don't know what that actually does, but I do it just in case. And then I hit trim underneath the rendering options. And this will remove some white space for us in certain situations. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get to work writing some basic examples. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just print out a basic sentence where we say what our favorite color is. So I'm gonna say my favorite color is and then in double curly braces, we're going to say color, which is going to be a variable name. So now all we need to do is define this color variable down here in our data. So it says we can enter the values in YAML or JSON format. So if we wanted to do it in JSON, what we do is open in curly brace, four spaces, and then we'll say color is equal to blue, closing curly brace. And now if we hit render template, it used our variable to fill in the blanks in our template. Now, like I said before, we can use YAML or JSON. So if we want to use YAML, we just say colors equal to blue, much easier, and we get the same output. We can even clear the render and then re-render it, and you can see the output is the same. And then we could do a second sentence if we wanted to. So we could say, my favorite animal is animal. So now we just need to define this animal variable so we'll say animal is equal to lion. And now we see that second line. So one important concept with Jinja is that anything outside of a curly brace will be rendered exactly as it is, including white space. So since we have this empty line in our template, it actually rendered an empty line in the output. But if we get rid of it, it should reflect in our output now. So now there's no empty line. So keep that in mind when you're writing your templates. So now let's show how we can reference data within a dictionary in our template. So let's create a person dictionary in our data. So we'll say person, and we'll have a, a few keys. Let's give them a name. We'll set that to John. We'll give them an age of 30. And then let's give this person a list of hobbies. So hobbies is equal to a list. We'll say running and skiing, just like that. So just typical YAML. But here in our template, we can print out those key value pairs. So we can say the person's name is, and then in double curly braces, we'll say person, then in brackets, we'll say name. Now in Jinja, we can reference dictionary keys by either bracket notation, or we can just use dotted notation, which is much easier to read. So in the second line, we can say the person's name is person.name. And then the last line will be the person's hobbies are person.hobbies. And let's take a look at the output. So we get the person's name is John. Oops, I did name instead of age. So we'll say age is person.age. Sorry about that. We render that. All right, cool. The person's age is 30. And then the third line says the person's hobbies are running and skiing. But you can see since hobbies is equal to a list, when we say person.hobbies, it literally, it literally prints out a list with brackets and then you know it's just a list of strings. So we have running and skiing. Let's say that we actually wanted to print each individual value within the list. We can actually use a for loop in our Jinja template. So let's create a different piece of data. Let's create a color, let's create a variable called colors. We'll set this to red, white, and blue. Now in our template, what we can do 
is if we want to do a for loop, we're actually going to use opening curly brace and then percent sign instead of double curly brace. But after that, we're just going to use typical Python for loop syntax. So we'll say for color in colors, percent sign closing curly brace, and then whatever we want to print out for each iteration of the loop. So let's just print out the color like that. And then with for loops, whenever we're done, we have to explicitly end the for loop. So we'll say end for just like that. And now if we hit render, we get red, white, and blue. Now, if we wanted to do an if else chain, we can do if else statements as well within Jinja. So let's create a new variable called number and let's set that equal to 50. So in our template, let's just say we want, we want to print out a statement stating whether or not our number is greater than 100. So what we could do is we'd say or, uh, open and curly brace percent sign if number is greater than 100, we want to print the number is over 100, else we want to print the number is less than 100. And then just like with for loops, we have to explicitly end our if statements. So we'll say end if, and then we'll go ahead and render that. And it says the number is less than 100 because our number was set to 50. But if we set it to like 120, it now says the number is over 100. And if we wanted to, we could use an if statement within a for loop. So if we go back to the colors list, so colors is equal to red, white, and blue. Let's loop through that. So we'll say for color in colors. And then we can say if color is equal to red, we're going to print the color is red. And then we'll say else, if the, so if the color is not red, we'll say the color is not red. It is color. And then we will end our if statement but we still have that for loop that we started at the very top, so we need to end that explicitly. So we'll say and for, just like that. And then let's go ahead and get rid of the empty white space because that will be rendered. As so now if we render our template, you can see on the first iteration of the loop, the color was red, so it says the color is red. But for the other two iterations, it was not red, so it prints out what the color actually is. So this is how we can use a nested um, if statement within a for loop, for example. So now that we've seen some basic for loop and if statement examples, let's build out a basic interface configuration for a Cisco device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all this, and I'm going to create a list of dictionaries where each dictionary is an interface. So in our data, let's create a variable called interfaces, set that equal to a list. The first item will be the first interface, and we'll give each interface a name, an IP address, and then a mask. And we'll use that to build the configuration. So we'll say uh, name is GI1, IP is all ones, and then let's make the mask a slash 24. And then now let's create our second interface object. So name for this one's gonna be GI2, IP is gonna be all twos, and then the mask is also gonna be slash 24. And so now let's loop through this and create our Cisco configuration. So kind of going along with what an actual config would look like, let's start off with an exclamation point. And then it would say like interface, blah, IP address, blah. So let's do a for loop. We'll say for interface in interfaces. We want to print out interface, interface dot name right? Because we're looping through this list of dictionaries. And so for each dictionary, we can just reference the name key with dotted notation. So interface.name. And then the next line, actually, let's go ahead and render it to see what it looks like. So we'll end our for loop. And then we'll end it with another exclamation point. And now if we hit render, you can see it says interface GI1, interface GI2. So we're on the right track. But for each interface, let's add the IP address configuration. So 
to make it look like a real Cisco configuration, add a couple of spaces on the next line. And then we'll say IP address, and then a double curly braces because we're referencing a variable value. We'll say interface.ip. And then the next value will be interface.mask, just like that. And so now if we hit render, you can see we're getting closer. We have the actual configuration going. Um, let's add no shut to each interface. No shut. And then we also want an exclamation point after each interface. So we'll add that in as well. And then we can get rid of that closing exclamation point. And let's say render template. And now we kind of have the workings of what would be a valid Cisco interface configuration using our Jinja template. So that being said, uh, that's all I have as far as these examples go. But again, just keep in mind, anything outside of a curly brace is going to be rendered, including white space. So you need to keep that in mind when you're writing your templates. If you want to use for loop or if else syntax, you need to put that within a curly brace and a percent sign. But if you're just referencing variable values, you're going to use a double curly brace. But with that being said, that's all I have for this video. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good one.